Here's the full guide to creating an Avicii style EDM track from scratch on FL Studio. Let's jump straight into it. Starting off with the melody, you'll notice that all of Avicii's tracks have an upbeat, happy sound to them. And we all know that this kind of sound is achieved through using the major scale. Quick note, if you don't know anything about scales or chords, then make sure to check out the 10 minute video on my page where I explain everything you need to know about music theory. Let's start by creating a chord progression in the major scale. We're going to use a piano for this first sound. Avicii used a lot of the Nexus piano presets, however I'm going to be using this preset from Analog Lab. If you don't have these plugins, then use the FL Keys plugin and take the Grand Piano preset. This track will be in the key of E major. We can set this up here by going to View, Scale Highlighting and selecting E for the root note and the major scale. This is where things are going to get interesting. Avicii didn't normally start his chord progressions on the root note in this case, the E major chord. The reason for this is that these melodies typically sound too happy and almost corny in a way. The best way of explaining this in a super, super oversimplified fashion is that these melodies end up sounding like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or the Happy Birthday Song, and we don't want that. Instead, we're going to start with the fourth chord. In this case, it's A major. The reason this is called the fourth chord is because E is the root note, so the first, F sharp would be the second, G sharp the third, and obviously A would be the fourth. Technically speaking, and again, my music theory video will help you understand this if it doesn't make sense. We are now using a mode of the major scale called the Lydian mode. In this case, we're using the A Lydian key. Here's a quick Google search to prove that A Lydian is the relative Lydian scale of E major. So we could technically adjust our scale highlighting up here to A Lydian, although the notes will be exactly the same. But let's just do this anyway. Here we'll go to scale highlighting again, change the root note to A, then go back into view, scale highlighting, and change the mode to Lydian. Now let's lay down the rest of the progression. I've decided to use the first, the second, third, and then seventh note in the scale. Of course, this seventh note is just pitched down an octave. Now here's how I turned these into chords. I took a note in the scale, skipped a note, then added the note here, then skipped a note, and added another note. In this case, I pitched a middle note, the C sharp, up an octave. This is called revoicing your chords. This just gives the chords a wider sound. For this B major chord, I simply played the root note, skipped a note, added the note, skipped a note, added the note, and then also added the root back in. This C sharp chord was a little different as I shifted the root note up an octave. And then finally, the exact same again for this G sharp minor chord. I had this D sharp and I pitched it up an octave. And it also added the G sharp in that was pitched up an octave again. Then I duplicated this chord progression across and simply chopped up the final chord to change the rhythm. In terms of the rhythm for your chords, this is completely up to you. Although I would turn your snap to grid on a quarter beat or a half beat and not play anything outside of this snap to grid. Here's the melody I've written. Now the rest of the track becomes super simple from here. We need to add to this melody to ensure that it doesn't sound boring or repetitive. To do this, let's layer it with other sounds. I started by taking this polysynth from Omnisphere. I've then copied the chord progression across and chopped it into a quarter beat rhythm. Here's how this sounds. Then I created this pad inside of Serum, which is just a saw wave with a low pass filter on it and played the chord progression where I elongated all of the notes. Finally, let's copy all of the root notes of the chords across and take a bass line preset. I've changed the rhythm up here for the bass line. It plays almost a triplet flow, where it plays every three quarters of a beat. So technically not a triplet, but a three quarter beat rhythm. I then layered this with a deeper pitch sub bass preset. This is just to bring out the lows. Now we're nearly done with the melody, but here's where we add the source. We're going to add a top line melody. There's no rules for this. Simply take a monophonic lead, which is where you can play only one note at a time and add a higher pitched melody that complements the chords only using notes in the scale. This is what I came up with. I also added this whistle-like sound at the end of the melody. And here's how this will sound all together. Mm -hmm. 
Now the melody is done. So let's lay some drums down. For EDM, drum patterns are pretty simple. You need a four on the floor kick, so a kick playing every beat, an offbeat open hat, and a clap every other beat. And I also decided to add this closed hat for variation. I also automate delays for all of my drums. This means that I can add delay effects that slowly fade in towards the end of each section. This isn't something that Avicii did, but I decided to add it to add some life to the track. Now that we've added drums, we'll need to use a little trick called side chaining. This is how Avicii got this pulsating kind of sound on his tracks. We can do this by adding a kickstart to all of our melodic and bassline elements. You don't need to use the kickstart plugin. All this is doing is lowering the volume quickly at the beginning of each beat and then fading it quickly back in. Here's how our melody and bass line sounds with this kickstart playing. So with all of these elements combined, we finish the drop. Let's listen to this. Now, we don't want our track to sound too repetitive, so we're going to switch up the second drop. I want to create a new lead pattern, but I want something completely unique. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's start by using our piano to draw in a lead top line melody. Now, let's play this melody, but use a pitched up vocal sample from Splice. Here's what I've come up with. Here you can see that even though we're using a vocal and a piano, they're still playing the exact same lead melody. You can experiment with all kinds of different unique ways of making lead patterns. We could have used a separate lead sound from any VST, or even brought a new vocal sample in. For this second section of the drop, let's also speed up the chords and the bass line. The bass line's playing exactly the same notes, but this time it's chopped up into a quarter beat rhythm. This is referred to as a roll-in bass. And you can see here that the chords are also playing a faster rhythm. In this case, they're hitting every half beat. And in some instances like here, they're playing every quarter beat. For this section here and this section here, we're playing exactly the same chords. These are just pitched up an octave, which doesn't affect the track melodically. Here's how this sounds. And here's how this sounds in the context of the track. Now, all we need to do is structure the track and add in subtle effect automations. This is the final structure I've used for the track, and I'll talk you through how I achieved this. I played all melodic components in the intro of the track, but for the drums, I only played the kick. I played this for eight bars and used this EQ automation sweep on the master. To do this, you simply go into your mixer, go to the master channel, open up a fruity parametric EQ2, click on this drop down, go to presets and select 20 Hertz to 18 kilohertz cut. Then right click on this frequency band, which is the high pass filter and select create automation clip. Then this will load into the playlist and you can add these points to slowly fade this into the next section. Here's how this sounds. I've also added the EQ on the screen so that you can see exactly what's happening. I also added this white noise transition to add tension. Now let's move on to the first verse. Here we're going to bring in the same vocal that we used in the hook. However, this time it's not re-pitched. Whilst we're playing this vocal, let's also add the pad. And this time we're going to use a different bass line. This is a soft Moog bass preset from Omnisphere. And here's how this sounds on its own. Again, this plays the same root notes from the chords. Here's how this section sounds. Then eight bars after this, we will slowly add the piano back in. We're also going to fade this in, but we're not going to fade it in simply by using volume. Instead, we're going to open up the low pass filter to bring this in using an automation clip. You can see this down here. Here's how this sounds.
Then for the next eight bars, we'll do the exact same thing for the rhythmic synth. In this section, we'll also chop up the vocals, add a riser and this clap pattern that speeds up towards the drop. We'll also add this delay automation for the vocals, which will sound like this. And then we'll add all of the drums and melodic elements for the drop. By the way, the full track is called Blame It On You and the link to all streaming services is in the video description. I'll now play a small snippet of the track. I hope you all learned something from this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.